Hey there everybody, what is going on? My name is Aditya and welcome back to another brand new video regarding semantic UI theming process and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at input. I'm sorry if I'm a little bit late to upload it. Because of some reasons I did not upload, I'm working on another series about WebAssembly, so stay tuned for that. I've been learning it for like a month since I have spoken about it, like from 7th of March, I guess. Um, so anyways, let's just jump right into the input options. So I opened up input.variables, which obviously comes from the semantic source themes default. And I have tried to record this video earlier and because of some reason I'm uh, recording it again. Uh, so, but anyways, that's not the point of this video. Um, let's just go ahead and jump right into it one by one. The variables that are present inside of the default file, default folder, present in the under the themes under which there is elements folder in certain uh, under which there's input dot variables not input dot overrides it just input dot variables so from the input dot variables we're gonna be taking a look at certain elements over here so then first of all right over here it is input font the which kind of font which you want to go ahead and put it in the you know that little sneaky input box uh, by the way I have changed my index.html in order to go ahead and add a little input field right over here uh, even though we are gonna be changing a lot of parts Parts of this website and we're gonna be trying to make it like an actual landing web page I'm sorry if I'm going a little bit too fast over there so then there's the vertical padding vertical padding allows us to basically you know the padding on the up and down sides and horizontal padding allows us to do padding on the left and right sides yeah so you can go ahead and set those inside of our global side dot variables no you cannot set that one over there i opened it because of this one part right over here the focused part when uh, most of most of the times the thing is you are not interested in changing those couple of colors um, you are mostly interested in changing you know the site variables uh, when you click on the input you do not want this kind of blue bar instead you want let's just say some kind of um I, I don't know maybe like a, a green bar like this so let me just go ahead and get to the colors that go cool. um, I did not save the color palette by the way I'm sorry for that not gonna be doing that same thing again this time uh, or maybe you know I'm just gonna be like uh, uh, exploring the most popular one because uh, that that seems like a viable option for me we're gonna be creating an entire website off of this little color palette so I guess it's important for me to go ahead and make be sure that whatever I'm doing is right or have I saved it have I saved it have I saved it come on wow shitty website where do I see how I saved it or not Okay, I have not saved it. So anyways, this is the color scheme that we are going to be using for the rest of the scores. Uh, so let's just go ahead and save it very first. Palette label, I don't know. A, save. Okay, so now that I have got that out of the way, let's just say I want the primary color to be, you know, this one to be surrounding the, you know, that little area over there for the focused border from so I can go ahead and open up the side dot variables of my global scheme and I can go ahead and set the input focus so so that you know it will not be colliding with the actual input forms input things that you're gonna be providing right over there which I don't care about at all so I'm gonna be like um, oops I guess I just copied and pasted this color so I'm gonna be copying and pasting uh, this color over here now uh, so now that we have got that out of the way uh, let's just take a look at one more thing before building our CSS there's this one thing called as border radius and in some of the cases you might just be interested in changing the border radius of this input field uh, you know in those cases only now that we have got the very round font I guess we should change it to completely round like a hundred percent round border radius so I'm gonna be copying this little line of code over here now inside of my site uh, in, under the elements folder there is a file named as input.variables which is present right over here and I'm gonna be pasting it right down there now I'm not gonna be setting it to the default border radius and instead I'm gonna be using uh, let's just say a hundred pixels a thousand pixels just to be a little bit more sure I don't know um, 
so that you know we'll be getting a complete border uh, the circular look to our input field but anyways um, that's not the point and obviously there's one more thing that you gotta know when you change the border radius there are a couple of things that uh, those other things like the icons and the circular icons for them the label icons too for them the particular you know the size is being chosen uh, chosen I may say um, be sure sometimes that may just conflict with how you are going ahead and dealing with it so make sure that that kind of thing does not happen with you by the way there are a couple of variables present even over here which I don't I'm not sure right now that this will be working for the focused input itself because yeah I, I, I have never checked on that before why not be quite honest so focus border color and focus background are set to something like this uh, how about we go ahead and change it right over here now focus border color I'm gonna be setting that to the exact same color that we have used right over here I'm not sure if that is the color that I had used or am I doing some kind of mistake over here I'm not sure if that is the color yep that is the color Oops, I'm sorry. So, um, focus background. Uh, now you can set the focus background to anything that you want. Um, now let's just say there's not even any proper color. I I I don't want to change the background anyways. So uh, that's that, and then we can go ahead and set the error background and error border. We can set that to something like uh, you know this pink color right over there. Um, I guess that is it. Okay, uh, I'm not prepared for this video at all. I'm like just, uh, oops, I'm sorry for that. Gulp build hyphen CSS. And let's just go ahead and get that out of the way. Now there are a couple of things. Inverted colors, obviously you can invert the colors inside of the semantic UI. In case you did not know, you might not have seen my entire series. The self-promotion is right over here, ladies and gentlemen. You can go ahead and check that out, by the way. It, uh, and be sure to click on the ad because I'll be getting a little bit of ad revenue and currently my my ads are shit I was somehow earning $20 now and because of some kind of ad collapse uh, that thing that is happening with YouTube I'm earning like $15 now so you know it's not that much of a difference but still it's quite shit when you see yourself growing a bit too big but then like getting to shit so now you can see as soon as I click the border is set to that particular color and borders radius is set to a thousand pixels let's just go ahead and inspect that thing right now uh, oh god so you can see it right over here there are a couple of things and border radius is actually set to a thousand pixels which we have set right over here and not set in the side dot variables obviously um, you know uh, there's one more thing there's another border radius thing present right over here which you should not try to set and uh, you know don't try it just don't uh, you can even though you can go ahead and set the default border radius to 1000 pixels in case you want everything to be round but we don't want that in that in this case because everything round will be will be literally awful so anyways I guess this is going to be it for this video uh, you can go ahead and play around a couple of options over here like uh, you know the default background at uh, the, the, the default background uh, uh, what do we say yeah the default background only uh, so uh, the, you can play around a couple of things like uh, text aligning you can set the text aligning to the right in case you are using the right to left and you just want to mess up with the user you can go ahead and try to do that uh, but this is going to be it for this video thank you guys so much for watching this video if you have been a little bit too uh, sneaky this time than the last time last time I was recording at like 10 o'clock in the night at, at evening at night I don't know uh, but anyways thank you guys so much for watching this video if you love this video just go ahead and slap that like button stay tuned for the web assembly course and peace out